from the studios of YMSL 2020. Finally, finally, we Norm. have an opening day, little prediction show, a little warm up show, get the juices flowing because so we expected to open at the end of March. Here we are in the, I guess, beginning of July now, and we're finally going to have opening day. Norm, we are here. We are here. It's good to say we got here. I think, uh, I'm not sure if everyone's ready for the season, Norm. I don't know if you checked with everybody. Um, it's only been around four months of warm-ups. Yep. Um, but it is great to be here. It's good that we are planning to start, and I think everybody's just jumping, chomping at the bit. To get I think started. every pitcher in the league has pitched in at least three or four high-intensity games already. Yes. Um, and well, rumor has it Max indeed flew out to Australia to pitch for the Australian softball Max league. has been pitching against an all-star team. Nate B has been pitching regularly. Um, so I think all the pitchers should be ready. Um, it, it could be a, a pitching type of season because of that. There's been a lot of reps for the pitchers. A lot of reps for the batters as well. Um, so, we have this situation with the fields, which is we have permits for the fields for practice play this first week. Um, we had them last week also, and we played full games and got no complaints. We are praying that the same thing will happen this week because, just so everybody's aware, if there's a complaint and the cops come, we're only allowed to be practicing there, not playing there. And there is a chance that your game could get suspended in the middle of a game and you'll have to resume it as part of a triple header, as part of a different date, because until July 6th, you can't actually play games there. We're going to roll the dice a little bit and we right. have two games this Friday and two games this Sunday. Very exciting. And Norman, just so you could be clear and everyone could understand, if a game would get paused, it would be resumed in that exact instance. In that exact instance, with the same count, with the same outs, with the same men on base, same everything, right. as much as we can. Not ideal. And if last week was any indication, we should be fine. But you never know. I'm done with... Uh, predicting what's going to happen based on what's gone on this year. You're ready so, to predict the matchups. No, I'll predict something like matchups and I'll predict something like games. But in life, predictions are really, we got to get a, a little spiritual here. Got to leave it all up to God because no one could have predicted what we all have been through this last three to four months. That's Nobody. Sure. Um, Saul, so how's, uh, how's your team looking? Very briefly, Whoa. give us a 10 to 12 second uh he thumbs up, he thumbs down. Is your team communicating? What's the story? 10, 12 seconds, Norm. That's all you're getting. Teams, thumbs up. Thumbs up. Thumbs up, ready, locked and loaded. And uh, yeah, Mikey looks good. Everyone looks good. Lineup's lethal. Let's start with your matchup. Okay. Your matchup is Sunday, 8.30 in the morning on Fireman's East, the firehouse. Um, we have DX, which is your team. Yes. Um, and you are going to play the ones who knock now i didn't realize this but it's actually the two world series captains a little rematch between mo cass interesting and max sutton and mo cass's team in particular has a lot of the same returning characters you have john eliezer you have world series mvp ike mavora you have uh shimmy is back and then they added some new 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 touches to their team mr yakubovich is playing third base for them Ralph Hannon on the bump. That's the big, big, big factor for the ones who knock. Yes. How will Ralph pitch this year back in the YMSL? Yes, yeah, so I think uh, in regards to the ones who knock, even though th we there are a lot of returning players from White Walkers, but also the way he designed his team is with the same blueprint that he designed the Walkers with. You know, he went. He wants to go deeper. He doesn't want that. That I mean, last year he had Joji, but he doesn't want that one powerhouse guy up in front he wants to have a consistent team that's going to get you know your singles your doubles your manufacturing runs so i think in regards to ralph Hannon, it, it, it is a question mark of will he be that guy that's going to give up you know four runs and win a game six right. four and um you know when he's on he's on but he does he is known to struggle sometimes with the walks and you know i think it's going to be a good team with a lot of um potential Great point on the um, on a, a couple of good points. I like that last thing that you just Thank said. You also, really, 
And I won't be this uh, nice to you throughout not, the whole show. Not usually. Not this usually, nice. but you made two very good points. He built his team like he built the White Walkers with a long lineup. But he is missing the Joe Greenberg, who is a top one, two, three player in this league. Yes. So that, that's a huge loss. I happen to think John Eleazar, even at his very advanced age, is getting better each and every season. Uh -huh. So I think John Eleazar this year is even better than John Eleazar of last year. He's been playing a lot. He's been facing Navy in these warm-up games and getting long, long at-bats and having some success here and there. Um, so I think he's a step up, but he was the second guy on that team last year behind Joe G. Now he's the first guy on the team. So I think that that's a step down, but this team is actually even a little bit longer uh, than last year's team. The lineup is is great. They're also missing Eric Rodol Greenberg to keep the team together, to be that loud, loud vocal leader. Um, I think this team is a little bit quieter than last year's team. A guy like Marty Antony, not the most vocal guy. A guy like Nussi, not the most vocal guy. Shimmy, not the most vocal guy. Although Shimmy does have, all these guys have passion and all these guys are talented, but they could use a little bit more of a voice. I see voices in Ruby Shahabar. That might not be the voice you want on your team. It's definitely a voice. Though. You know, he's definitely a voice. And I see a voice in John Eleazar. I don't know if he's always the best voice for the team mentality. We'll see. So there's a lot of questions with this team and a lot of talent with this team. What was the last thing you said that I uh, that I complimented you on? Why did I compliment last thing I you? I believe we talked oh, about Ralph Hanning. No, you said you said something. They may not get off to to a quick start because I agree with that. That's what happened with the Walkers last year. Also, they didn't get off to a quick start. Over time, I think this team will come together and find its groove. I don't know if this is the best opening day team. I think this is a good team for the long haul. Um, over to your team. We said it in the preseason things that we did, uh, you know, three months ago. Your team has a phenomenal lineup. Yes. Okay? You guys are leading off with Penny Silberstein. Nobody knows this guy except for Max. He says he's a leadoff hitter and a right fielder and a good one. That's huge because once you get past him, you're getting into Joe Greenberg. You're getting into Mark Braha. These are two of the best hitters in the whole league. Mm -hmm. Boom, boom. Elliot Saka. Max Sutton becomes your, your, your fifth hitter in this lineup. That's insane. That's insane. And then you have a pickup like David Harari. That guy can hit a ball a mile if, he, if he's hitting well this year. Eddie Michon. That's a tough out. You know? Mikey Shallon, tough out. Th this team's lineup is stacked. Salt Towel. Salt Towel, tough out. The question is, Salt Towel did get the uh, game-winning uh, hit in game three of the 2018 yes. World Series against NAB for Baltimore. Um, Thank you, Norm. But this team has... Put that graphic on there when we run this, this team line. has uh, This team has some issues, though. And the issues are with the infield. Um, and they're putting aforementioned uh, Saul Towel at third base. You have Mark Braha at short, Max Sutton short center. <clears throat> Eddie Michon now moves to second base. And you have David Harari at first base. You have multiple question marks there. Um, Eddie used to be a gold glove shortstop. I'm not so worried about him, but I am worried about his mobility. He's up there. He's one of the older guys in the league. He's the greatest guy. He's a committee member. He knows the league better than anybody, but age is age. You know, father time. So yeah. he's got to play second base now. He's got to man a, 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 a big area. And David Harari at first is not the smoothest. And now you're putting you at third base. You've never played third base before this season. A lot of question marks. It's the type of team where it was built with the potential, not with the guarantee. Mm -hmm. So if and when we do all gel together as a team, then you're talking about a great field with a lethal lineup. You know, that, that's that's the mentality here. I mean, you skipped over our outfield, which is A+. plus. No question marks in your outfield. Joe Greenberg in center. Um, in left field, you have Elliot Saka. And in right field, you have Pinney, who we take Max's word for it as a solid right fielder. Yes. I like your outfield because Mikey is really a fly ball pitcher. And um, it, he, he definitely gets more fly balls than ground balls in, in my experience. And uh, I, I think with a strong outfield, he'll be successful. But the infield cannot implode on him. He gets a ground ball to second, a ground ball to third, a ground ball to first. You gotta get those outs. So, sure. you know, uh, I'm a little worried about your infield. 
Um, are you ready to make predictions now, or you yeah. want to do them all at the end? No, let's do it. So go ahead. Okay. Um, a <clears throat> lot of question marks on both ends. Um, I'm going with a split here. I thought about this a lot. I really wanted to go with a sweep, um, but I, I think it's uh, I think it's too hard to call this matchup. It's a very good matchup. It's two very good teams. I'm going with a split. Are you predicting your team this year, or are you still scared I, to predict? I, I will be predicting my team. Okay, now, we're going to keep records like we did last yes. year. Yes, so, so with the, you're in a no-win situation right now, because if you pick your team to split or to get swept, you'd be crazy. Right. But if you keep picking your team to, to sweep like you did with the Lumber Kings we're early last year, you're going to keep... <laughs> so, <laughs> it is a bit of an issue, mm -hmm. Norm. Um... I honestly am going to pick us to sweep. Okay. I know sometimes I've been said that that's going to invigorate the opposition. Okay. Um, as evidenced last year when Mikey Shalom uh, absolutely ripped me when I predicted a lumber sweep. And then what what do you want you to do? What do I want wanted him to rip me because right. that's what happened. But um, I do think we're going to get off to a fast start. I think that, like we said, the, the ones who knock uh, may be a little sluggish out of the gate, and I'm looking for us to capitalize. So I'm going to go... DX sweep. Okay. Um, I'm very excited for that matchup. That's Sunday morning. Let's go back to Friday. Go ahead. Let's go to the first game of the week. Okay. We're starting 8.30 in the morning this year, by the way. Unless otherwise noted, all games starting 8.30. 9 by 9 rule is 9 by 8.30 now. And Norm, I did purchase a helmet. Oh, good. Courtesy of the Athletes Alley. Very important, guys. The, the umpires, we have to wear helmets. We're in a Delta League, a, a throw from one of our shortstops who have cannons, whether it's Gabe, Mark, Marshama, Zach, a throw that gets into somebody's head on the base paths could be disastrous, obviously, so you must wear helmets. Because of COVID, you don't want to share your helmet. Everyone go out and buy a helmet. How much does this cost you, Saul? This one was around $40. $40, you bought a Highline one. Because I did buy a nice one courtesy of Athletes Alley. They are running a 20% off sale. Okay. If you mention YMSL, Oh, uh, at the thing, that's actually untrue. That's twenty percent off, regardless of what you mention. But be sure to mention one. Okay. So, uh, if you like Saul, you can buy the forty dollar one. If you like me, you can buy the twenty two dollar one. Available at Athletes or at Dicks or wherever. Okay, swimming, swimming in the swimming pool. So you can remove the helmet sure, now. You've done your demonstration. We have swimming. Uh, Max Yadid on the hill with Zach Eskenazi and David Farka. And then you have the rest of the team, and it's a big gap after the after the big three. Yes. You have a big gap with the rest of the team. Uh, no offense to anybody else, but those guys are three first round picks, and the rest of them are not. Um, so you have that squad against uh, Rough and Rowdy, which is a very <laughs> very odd team, if you ask me. Ab Cohen with uh, with uh, his uh, you know partner in crime, Sonny Shalom. Um, they they have let's go through this roster real quick. Go ahead. They have Gabe Abadi at shortstop. They drafted John. It was no secret that they wanted to move him, despite AB's claims that he was thrilled with John. He ended up trading him for Gabe. He also traded away Nathan Batesh because he had two third basemen. He had Nathan Batesh and Salim. Mm -hmm. He traded away Nathan Batesh pre-COVID. Nathan Batesh went to swimming, who he'll be facing this week. And then Salim quit post-COVID. Now we've left with no third baseman from two to none. I thought he should have made a, a quick deal with um, with JT, who had two third basemen. But he didn't. They couldn't make a deal. And he ended up picking up Harry Braha. So capable they had, third baseman. Capable right. third baseman. Um, so you have Harry at third. You have Gabe at short. Um, at short center, they're going with Zeke Dweck. To me, Zeke Dweck's an outfielder. Second base, they're going with Albert Sitt, another outfielder. And then at first base, they're going with the great Michael Mount Saban Solomon. Um, their outfield is as good as it gets. A.B. Jeff in center, Irwin in left, and Sonny in right. Great outfield. All three have played center field at a high level in this league, although Sonny did it in the uh, previous era, if you will. Irwin is still today, any day, a... Uh, 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 a starting center fielder and AB is as good as it gets. So that outfield is unbelievable. And then they have a good pitching staff. They have AB Cohen, led the league in ERA, yes. who they're treating like an afterthought. And then they have Michael Ancona, the rookie, 
um, you know, as as their I guess their starter pitcher. They're they're focusing much more on Ancona than they are on AB Cohen, and that's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. Your thoughts? My thoughts, Norman. It's going to be a little bit of a hot take. Hot I, take. Hot take. Soul Towel's hot take. I love this team. Wow. And rowdy. That is a hot take. I really do like this team a lot. I think they're very good. I think that just because you're not playing with your best friends doesn't mean you're not up there with the best of the league. I love their pitching staff. I think it's going to be very scary. And imagine, imagine an instance where uh, A.B. Cohen gets you out, strikes you out, and they put Michael Ancona in, and then next thing you know, because you struck out against A.B. Cohen, you're facing him again. You keep going back and forth. Michael Ancona can play first base. You can keep going back and forth, and I think this team is strong. Okay. I think, like you said, there are definitely some question marks that if there are some holes in there, they may need to shore up. You may see a, s a small trade. You know, I don't know if Zeke can play short center. Um... Albert's very capable, really, where you put him. He's, he's, he's a gamer. But I think you may see a, a couple small moves. But other than that, I think that they are one of the most opening day ready teams. I, I, I have to disagree, Sol. I don't love Harry at third. I think he's capable, not great. I don't like Zeke at short center. And I don't like Albert sitting at second base. I don't like it. He's an outfielder. I know he's capable. They're all capable. We're all capable. Everyone's capable. We love everybody. But those three guys on your infield, I, I'm, I, I don't know if I love that with a, with a rookie pitcher on the mound. I also think they're making a mistake with, uh, you know, it seems, I don't know this from the team, it seems like they are pushing, pushing, pushing the narrative that Ancona is great and A.B. Cohen's the afterthought. A.B. Cohen led the league in ERA. I think they're not going to manage this the right way. As uh, th That's just my opinion. Yeah, I think they're going to underuse yeah. A.B. This year. That could all be, you know, uh, window dressing. We may see A.B. Cohen starting the game uh, on Friday. We don't really know how they're going to manage it. 100% it could be window dressing. Yeah. A thousand percent. Um, just so everyone is aware of the rule, as long as they have more than 10. So if they have 11 or 12 people and Kona is guaranteed a game, which is seven innings or six if they win, if he pitches the complete game, he could switch. He could do three innings one game, four innings the next game. He could even switch within a game, within an inning, at bat, by at bat, that's perfectly legal. That's even legal in MLB. Right. You're allowed to do that if you, as long as the guy's playing the field. Um, so we went through the rules. And that's if he's in the field, Norm. Yes. Yeah. And it, it, it's a long, detailed thing of the rules. Yes. I'll put it on the website. And uh, we went through it with the captains. They understand it. And if you have any questions, call me. Please don't call me every week <laughs> with the same questions. Um, just trust that we reviewed the rules with the captains at hand. Um, swimming. Zach Eskenazi and David Farka, along with Jigga and Teddy, are back from the fan favorite butter organization. How many butter fans did you see all over town last year, all over the world last year? There were a ton of butter fans, Norman. Every Sunday morning, the bagel store was out of butter. Yes. And, um, yeah, just they bring a ton of fun and excitement to the league. They're so great for the league. However, they traded in another fan favorite, the Cuda. They got rid of Cuda, and they traded him for little old Maxi D. So uh, I'm not sure how the fans are going to respond to that. But that is a that, I mean, you're taking a similar team to Butter with Farka and Zach, and you're giving them Maxi D on the hill. Huge, huge. huge. Um, I think the most important guy on this team is really David Rishti because I don't know if Farka could duplicate what he did last year, but we know he's great. We know Zach is great. We know Max is great. David Richie is the next guy in this lineup. Abraham Haber is the next guy in this lineup. Guys like that, if they have off years, this team will not succeed. They cannot win games one nothing. So with, if you get Farka out or you get Z out, you pitch around the other one and then the lineup's over. Recipe for disaster. I had that in Cleveland. I had that a few times in my life. It's no good. You gotta get a few more guys in the lineup hitting. You need Abraham Haber. You need um, you need Nathan Espitesh even. He's got to give you something. Nathan Batesh can't just be a defensive third baseman. He's got he's got to hit his weight at least this year. Um, Steven Batesh has to come through a little bit. Although he's clutch in the postseason, he's got to play a bigger role in the regular season. All these guys, the role players, and Jacob Jigga Jamal 
Enough of being a nine hitter catcher. Da, da, da. You're at your playing weight now. You got to start getting some big hits and smart at bats for, for swimming. I fully agree with you, Norman. I think that the problem Max Adid had last year was run support. You know, he was giving up two or three runs and not winning games. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, exactly like you said, I don't even know how much more I have to comment on it, but the guys, Abe Haber, DR, you know, Max, uh, sorry, Zach and Farka get on, you got to bring them in. You know, you can't have them. They can't carry a team. You know, when you're batting 10, the one, two, and three guys cannot win games for you. Right. They can get on, and then the four, five, six have to bring them in. If that can happen, you have one of the best pitchers in the game yes. on there. And if that can't happen, you're going to see a repeat of last year where it's going to be low scoring and fighting for that eight, nine, seven hitter to get that one hit to push him over. You take someone like Abe Haber. He had a great year last year. Yes. If he could duplicate that, he's fine. The difference is he was batting seventh or eighth last year in that stacked lineup. Now he's prob probably batting four or five. You know, he's not batting below six. I promise you that. So, uh, you know, someone like that's really got to step up. Their infield D is phenomenal. Yeah. Nathan Batesh at third, Zach at short, uh, Ruby Saka at short center, David Rishti at second, and Stephen Batesh at first. You could have a gold glove at every position on the infield. Um, I mean, it, it doesn't get better than that. Outfield, Farka in center this year. Farka in center. Yes. Abe Haber in left this year, and in right, T-Pop. Um, not, not the greatest defensive outfield. However, I wouldn't dare try take an extra base on these guys because no. who has a better arm than Abe Haber? Maybe only Farka. I don't know, but these guys have two of the best arms in the league. You have Jigga behind the dish. Um, strong team. Strong team. I, I think we outlined exactly what the, where they're... I think you're going rough and rowdy sweepy. I don't know. You love that team. I'll tell you, Norm. I love the team. The matchup, I don't see Max Adid getting swept really ever. It's very hard to picture that. Okay. Um, Although he's gotten swept. He has gotten swept, yes. Although last year, I think he got swept one time, if ever. Right. He splits the whole year. He split a lot till the, till the end. Till the end, yeah. He was splitting every week on that one-hit team, and yes. then at the end, they ended 5-9 and nine or something like that. Right. So he must have gotten swept um, someone. Regardless, though, I, I do think the star power of Max Adid uh, Zach, Farka, and a couple of the role players will be um, strong enough to definitely get a game. I'm going to go split. And again, I think we've outlined what swimming and rough and round you need to do exactly to get to get them into that next level. And, uh, you know, if one of them comes out opening day doing that, then we're going to see a sweep in one direction. But I don't see that happening opening day. I'm going to go with a split. I'm going to go head first into the pool. I am swimming with the dolphins. Nice sunny day in the summer. What's better than jumping in a pool? A nice refreshing cold pool. Get your life preservers out. Get your rafts out. Give me a nice little uh, tequila on the raft as I'm relaxing in the swimming pool this year. I'm doing my laps. I'm going swimming. I'm going swimming to sweep rough and rowdy off of Fireman's this week. Swimming 2-0 and at the end of this week. Okay. I don't know why you're thinking you're going to be in a pool anytime soon. Swimming, baby. We got the season starting <laughs> Friday. I'd hold off those beach reservations. Okay, Saul. You want to go to Sunday or the other game Friday? What let's makes do, the most sense? I think the most sense would be Friday. Most let's, sense is Friday, so let's fun. go to Sunday then. Okay. <laughs> Sunday, we have Look Out. Interesting um, that they all wanted the black uniforms this year. Three different teams. We put them in a, in a lottery. We picked it out of a hat. Yes. A.B. Sack won the lottery. It's only going to be 95 degrees. And now we're playing the depths of the summer. <laughs> um, he also won the lottery for the first overall pick and made that trade. That was this season, if you if you remember. Yes. A.B. had the first overall pick. Um, so you have a look out against cold-blooded. Um, could be two of the best teams in the league, in my opinion. Um, could be a potential World Series matchup. It's going to be hard to predict this, I can tell you from now, because I love both these teams. I love them. Um, look out, you have A.B. Saka on the mound. I might be partial. I love A.B. Saka on the mound. I think he's a gamer. Um, and I think with a real team behind him, you can never count them out. When you guys were 1-7 or whatever that was last year, he always plays better towards the end of the season in the hot weather. Now it's going to be hot all year long. You never count this guy out. I don't think he's starting 1-7 this year or anything close to it. 
Let's go through this squad before we get to Cold Blooded, who I also love. A.B. Saka on the mound. Um, the infield, Nanu Zolta. He was an MVP candidate last year, That's Nanu Zolta. Glove. He was a Gold Glove third baseman. Um, did he win the Gold Glove, Nanu? I don't I'm think trying. he won it. I'm not sure if he won, but um, he did play like Gold Glove. I think Hank won it again. I think. I can't remember. I don't know. Okay, Nanu Zolta at third. Um, Steven Shalou. At short, look, look at the bats that are coming with each position, okay? Yeah. So you have A.B. Saka, Nanu Zolta, Steven Shalou. Short center, you have Abe Soroya. Great glove. Um, second base, you have Carlos. That gives you flexibility if an outfield is missing, by the way. Yes. Um, and first base, you have Mo Haber of the Baltimore Orioles. Um, and then in your outfield, I guess they're putting Ali in center, Teddy Braha in left, left. and Aharon Cohen Aharon Cohen, look at that. The Cohen Gadol. Aharon Cohen um, in right field. I didn't notice that until just now. Um, okay. Who's catching on, maybe now? I'm putting Jakey Casson as the catcher. Maybe right. Sal Dweck can catch. I know Jody won't catch, although he used to be a great catcher. He can't catch anymore. Um, this lineup is long, it's fierce, and it is powerful. There's not too many power hitters in the league anymore, real true power hitters. This team has Steven Shalou. This team has Nanu Zolta, Ali Marshall, back to back to back, and a bunch of the other guys get on base a lot. So Mo Haber, Carlos, Cohen, you know, this this is a good team. This is a real team, though. We knew this was coming from the second that those ping pong goals said he had the number one. Yeah. Um, we knew he was going to have a deep team. And I think I like what he did with the team. I, I know there was a lot of speculation early saying, we know it was going to be good, but is it good? It, did it reach its potential in the draft? And again, that's yet to be seen. So he, he actually, um, we knew he was taking Shalou. With that next pick, he took Ali. Yeah. With Farka still on the board. Because remember, uh, Swimming took uh, Max with the five, and they waited on Farka. Mm -hmm. And then A.B. Saka picked in between them, and he took Ali over David Farka. Now, um, Ali's had the best career you could ever have in YMSL history, but today, today, most people would tell you Farka is the pick. Uh, A.B. Saka's uh, very friendly with Ali, so maybe he went with his friend and maybe the chemistry, um, so, uh, but I don't know how that's going to play out. Like, is Ali and Farka close enough where you take your friend, or is Farka past alley now where you gotta look past the friendship and take Farka. A B went with the with, with with the legendary Ali Marshall over Farka. Right. I mean I, I like like you said it's almost crazy to say where where what Yeah Sure. Sold the uh they seem to not like where I parked yes. my car. We will hold. We will hold. Stand by That was the police saying Saul parked the wrong way. So Saul came to the studios and parked the wrong way. Ron, what'd Saul do? Uh, he, he parked the wrong way. Why'd he park the wrong way? He parked the wrong way on a two-way street in front of our studios. Officer came and he didn't ticket him due to his YMSL credential, but he wasn't happy with the way Saul parked. Saul is now going 20 yards downfield for the first down. Saul, what happened there? Paulette, what happened there? Um, he parked the wrong way. Wow. <laughs> Norman seems we were on a good footing with the uh, police for Friday. Shouldn't have any issues <laughs> as I've just relocated. That better not car. be a sign for Friday that the I cops mean, just came. Norman, please check out the thoroughfare here with the thousands of cars moving at a speed of hundreds of miles an hour. So clearly, parking headed northbound on Pullman Avenue was a huge error. <laughs> and uh, we thank the Long so Branch Police Pullman Department. Pullman goes west to east. Parking northbound oh, would no, be a huge problem. It's all the same. You parked westbound when you should have parked eastbound. So continue your thought on <laughs> Ali Marshall being taken over. Stephen Chalou, will that effect look out? Was it the right pick, the wrong pick? What do you think? I think... Um, Directly speaking, it was the wrong pick, but given the fact that um, Ali is amazing, it may not. It, I don't think it's going to show up as a major issue. Um, so for that reason, I think the lookout team is going to be very good. 
And um, yeah, I'm excited to see what they do. AB Sack is great. Hold on, make sure we're both in the camera, honey. Can you see us both? Yeah. Perfect, okay. So now cold-blooded, all right? Cold-blooded, the word around the league is that this is the team to beat for the World Series. That's the world word going around, okay? You have world champion Leo Kassin on the on the mound, okay? Outfield, left field, DK. Center field, Jake Dweck. Right field, Jack Abadi. Cannot get better, cannot possibly get better than DK, Jake, and Jack Abadi, okay? Infield, third base, Hank Shalom. Shortstop, Joe Eshko. Short center, Jackie Eshko. Jackie Eshko, the veteran, the Wiley veteran. Um, second base, they're going Solly as Towel. First base, Sammy Towel, the 42-time gold glove at first base. I don't know if you've ever seen him play, really. He's an excellent, excellent first baseman. Great technique. Um, Mike C behind the dish catching Leo Kassin. Everyone knows my thoughts on this team. I think they should really bring Jack Abadi to short center. Put Solly S. Towel in his natural position at right. You have Jake and DK in the outfield already. That outfield's unstoppable. You bring Jack Abadi into short center. You move Jackie Eshko to second base. I think it's better for multiple different reasons. Yeah. Um, and you talk about a lineup, so um, you could go in so many different directions here. You know, you have Jake and Joe Eshko, one and two, and Jack Abadi, one, two, three, in some order there. Um, you know, you then have, you have your Hanks, you have, you know, you have a lot of bats here. Sammy Towell, um, Jackie Eshko, my main man. My main man. Oh! Oh! Raw Dog! You have the Raw Dog on this team. It's so okay if anyone gets out of line, you have Raw Dog, the thin, stealth Raw Dog to bring them all back together. Um, and then you have Rookie of the Year candidate Eddie Turner waiting for his opportunity. What do you think, Sol? No, and this is a very solid team. You don't want to be playing this team. Like, when you see this team on your lineup, you're like, oh, you don't want to be playing this team opening day. Right. They're definitely, I don't know, I guess I would say one of the most opening day ready teams. I think I agreed with the way you want to move around the defense. Mm -hmm. I think they may come to that. Um, Mid-season, they may want to try this out first. Um, the lineup is very scary, Norman. The lineup is very scary, and the field doesn't have many question marks once we move it around a little bit. Even without moving it around, it's not really question mark. You no, want to say Solly S is a question mark in second because he's a an question outfield? mark, but he's young and he's an athlete. We're talking like, max potential, I think it's. I don't. I don't know that they're at that max potential. Um, I think it's a good matchup for them opening day because they are facing the like the team with the most draft capital. You know, the team that on paper before a draft even happens should be the best team. Mm -hmm. So I think it's going to be a very good test for them. And then Leo Kassin, you know, World Series champion last year. Could he do it again? Uh, he can. With this team, he can. It, it, with this right. team, he can. I think he showed that he could do it with any team, really. Yeah. The, way, the way he pitched in the playoffs, Norman, was up there, elite of the game. You know, there's no denying that. No walks, no none of that. And there's no denying that he's taken as one of the later pitchers. You take him later, you have better players on your team. Exactly. Bottom line. Exactly. Bottom Definitely line. have a good team behind him. I think, I remember Joe Eshko, the guy's phone must have broke before the draft. He didn't make one trade, nothing. No. And then no. he got to draft day. You know, he made day of trades. He really, he kicked it into high gear and he put down a great team on paper. I... When Joe Eshko wasn't making any moves in the year of the trade, where everyone was making move upon move upon move just for the sake of making moves sometimes, and he stayed quiet, I was watching to see what he would do draft day. He surprised me. He took Jack Abadi uh, with that first overall pick coming off, you know, serious surgery, you know? So that's a pick you make when he's not coming off surgery. But then I saw his plan be uncovered, you know? He revealed yeah. the plan on what he was doing, and this was his plan, this unbelievable team, and I was so impressed by the way he composed himself and by the way he kept his, his uh, you know, he, he kept it a secret what he wanted to do. Everyone knew he's friendly with Jake, and everyone knew he's friendly with Leo, so he sort of knew those parts, but I had no idea what direction he was going to go in with this team, and the way he filled it out, I gotta say, 
it, it's as good of a draft and as good of trades he made day of draft as you could possibly have. Everyone is impressed by this team. Where are the question marks? Is Hank a question at third? Absolutely not. He could be the best third baseman in the game, you know? Um, is that outfield a question mark? Absolutely not. I don't see any question marks here. Maybe Joe Eshko at short is the biggest question mark on the team, and he's wow. excellent. Wow. So, so what are you thinking, Norm? I love both teams. The, I'm going a split here because I think these are the two of the uh, two playoff teams in a limited playoff year, and um, I'm going split because I can't pick it. I agree. I'm not here to predict any playoff teams. I think they're both uh, star-studded. I'm going to say split as well. Um, but again... You know, let's see who shows up opening day. They both both should be great. If there was a sweep here, I would not be concerned if I was a team that got swept because you got swept by a, by a very, very good, good team. team and you have so many veterans on your team where you're not going to go crazy because you're 0-2. Right. You really shouldn't. None of these, I mean... But we're both going split. I'm going split here because it's, it's two great teams. I, I can't see them either one getting swept. Although, if you're going to get swept, you, you get swept opening day maybe. Maybe you're not fully ready in the normal season. I don't know. Last matchup that we have to do is Friday morning, 9.30. Late start. Late 9.30 start Friday morning. Um, we have one Mo time. Mar Shama, the legend, that shortstop. The captain, Mo Shama, against JT and his Arizona Diamondbacks. The new hub of COVID-19 in Arizona is uh, surrounding JT Stadium. This game had to be moved to one more time's home ballpark, even though it was scheduled for Zona, because Zona is being vacated. Right. Um, <laughs> where do you want to start? Where do you want to start? D-backs or one more time? I will start with the D-backs, Norm. Okay. D-backs. Uh, they have a surplus of third basemen. They yes. drafted both Charles Saka and David D.C. Cohen. They drafted both of them pretty early also. Um, so he's putting, I guess... Charles Sacker didn't bother to show up to the team practice last week, so I guess he's not getting third base. I guess he's going short center. David D.C., they said, played very well at third. Um, at shortstop, you have J.R. Jordy Rommel looks really good this year. Um, Jeffrey Saka on the mound. You have an outfield of Jackie Towell in center. Um, left field, you have Joe Chira. Key factor to this team for this year is Joe Chira. And in right field, I guess you have A.B. Dweck. I don't know if Albert Dweck is an outfielder or not. I've never seen him play. I'm not sure. He's on their team, so maybe he plays right. Maybe they split it. Um, and then you have Lee Zakaria at second base. Um, and Joe Adis uh, also on this squad, Lee's nephew. Um, so that's, that's the D-backs team. We went through it as much as you could go through it. It's like two different squads. You have your yeah. JT, your JR, your Joe Chira. You have that. You have your Jeffrey Saka, Charles Saka, Lisa Carrier, David Cohen. You have that. And then you just, just to add more gas, just to add more spice into the pot, you put Froggy at first base just to make the whole thing combust completely. Um, Froggy says he's not speaking this year. Ten minutes later, he was on camera speaking. Um, so that's this squad. What do you think? Norm, I'll be honest. Be honest. So. It is not my favorite team. Okay. That is for certain. Um, I think that, like you said, that the division, will that be a problem? You know, we were at that scrimmage, Norm. There was definitely a little tension when they weren't getting runs. And was then, there? And there was a little throwaway, you know, you get a ball, ground ball, throw, overthrown first. is like that thing of like, oh, this guy's looking at that guy. That guy's looking at that guy. I think they could get it together. I think JT... You know, World Series captain, uh, Jeffrey Saka, multiple rings. JT, World Series co-captain with Dano. Yes, but ring nonetheless. Big difference. The because team, his success yes, is without Dano a, has not been good. Yes. Philadelphia was the best roster in the league last year, in my opinion. They had a great team, and they self-combusted last year. They did not show up for the playoffs. They did not show up. Yeah, and you know what? Let's see what happens with this team. This team, they're starting. Tensions are high, if you ask me. Like, you have Charles Saka. You think he's so happy going to short center? I don't, I don't know. know why he didn't show up. I'm I don't better feel the doubt. Maybe he had something. Charles but... Saka was in Rhode Island for the weekend. Okay, wherever he was, you're fighting for a third base job with another third base 
equal level to you. You know, it's not like you, 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 you're you at this level and the other guy's here or vice versa. It's a real competition for third base. Yeah, right. And I don't I don't know how happy he is to just be moving over. I don't I don't think he's going to take that lightly. Now, what happens if, you know, there's a couple of errors here and there. Is there one guy uh, quietly saying, get me in there? I want, I want the shot. 100%. Uh, Joe Chira in left. Don't love that. Don't love it. He played center last year for Mean Machine. Mm -hmm. But that whole team was terrible. Yeah. You know? And... You know, Jeffrey Sacker pitched well in that team, but he was the pitcher of the Mean Machine team that didn't do anything. No. So there's a lot of things on this team that, you know, you may not pick going into opening day. You know, obviously, as the year develops, you see what comes of each team. Uh, it's not my favorite team on paper. Lee Zakaria played a pretty good second base, not a great second base. He didn't play. He, he was not even nominated for a gold glove last year. I, I guarantee he'll have a better year defensively at second than last year. I don't know what happened last year. It was a yeah. little bit of an off year. We love Lee. Lee's a premier hitter, premier player, and greatest guy in the world. But he didn't have the yeah. best defensive year last year. I, I could see Jeffrey having a takeover this year where he becomes sort of like the captain of the team. I think he may need to. JT, he's, he's, JT logistically is very good, but he's not known to be that vocal, screaming guy in the dugout You know, that's amping up a team. Um, so you see Jeffrey taking on that role. I see Jeffrey taking on the role, and with some of the guys on this team, I don't, I don't see that necessarily as a good thing. You uh -huh. know, I don't know if Jr. wants Jeffrey being the captain of the team. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know if uh, Mar Sarari is not going to be second guessing what JT or Jeffrey or Ramel is doing. I don't know. I don't, I, I don't see this team meshing. JT, to his defense, keeps telling me this is not Bachelor with, with the chemistry and you guys think it was all chemistry, chemistry. We, we're we ballers and we're going to hit the ball and we're going to field the ball. But I'm not too sure about that either. JT will hit the ball 100%. Jordy will hit the ball 100%. I'm not guaranteeing that Charles Sack is going to hit the ball or David D.C. Cohen is going to hit the ball or that um, or even Joe Chira is going to hit the ball. There's no guarantee of no, that. Not at all. I so, think, you know... JT is right in that respect. When, team, when they're winning games, no one questions anything. That's right. a fact. But then it's when you're splitting. Are you are you splitting saying we had a good week? Or no, it was this guy's fault and that guy's fault and this thing. And then that influences the next week. So you know what? It is the bachelor norm. You're on, you're on, you're, you create a family with the 12 guys on your roster. You get a family. We're in WhatsApp chats. We're emailing. We're sending uh, GIFs all day long. So you know what? That is your family for the next three months. And if you I, I believe that's family, GIFs. I believe it's GIFs. I have a very detailed argument. I will not I get into that now. Okay. Don't get into it. One more time, Saul. Um, what do we got? You, you have maybe on the mound. Okay, but it doesn't end there because you have you have a, a pretty s strong team behind him, although, albeit with question marks yes. again. Okay, like most teams have. Um, you have Marsham at shortstop. Marsham is still, today, is still a top defensive shortstop in this league. Some say he's still the number one defensive shortstop in the league, although Zach may have something to say about that at this point. But either way, it is amazing watching this legendary career where when I was playing in the late 90s and early 2000s, this guy was as you know as good as it could possibly get to think that we are now in 2020 and we're talking about the same guy being a top shortstop is, is, is incredible. Amazing. But that's what we're dealing with. However, when he used to bat 600 with doubles and triples, last year he did not have a good year at the plate. And th that's a key factor for this team because they may need more of a bat from Morris this year if they want to have success. You have Morris at short. Um, third base, you have Dano. Um, although they did pick up uh, Ray Esses, who could also play third base. So we'll see what they decide to do there. Um, I'm not sure what direction they're going to go in, but... Dano is a uh, a classic third baseman. Where would you think Dano would go if not for third? Dano base? could play uh, short center. He could play second. Um, I I think he's great at third. Yeah, I don't see Dano. Moving okay, third. so so I think we would both leave him at third at least to open and um, go from there. Yeah. At short center, they have Jackie Haber. Jackie didn't play last year. He's a great bat um, and uh, capable short center. Second base, they have H. They have Jaime Shama. By the way, he could also play third if he wants to, but yeah. you know Jaime, it's all what, what he's in the mood to do that year. Um, so he's going to second base. He was a Gold Glove nominee last year. And at first base, they have Ben Rishti slash Ray S's. So they'll split the time. Maybe Ray moves to third. Maybe he stays at first with Ben. 
Um, let's head to that outfield, though. Let's go to the outfield. In left field, Albert Zolta. In right field, Ruby Shalou. And in center field, you have perennial gold glove in right field, Joseph Bub Jamal. Now, that's a big change going from right to center. I think that's the question mark on this team. I agree, Norm. I think that Bub was an amazing right fielder. I think he definitely is deserved of the uh, move to center field. Um, I think it's a good pitcher to be behind. Um, with that move, you know, Navy's team is, is not typically known to have that, you know, first rounder center fielder. He doesn't exactly get hit for 600 feet, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think Bubs, I think he'll be up to the challenge. And um, but like our jobs here on the uh, on the media team is to say, well, what if it doesn't? You know, now what are you doing? Maybe Ruby moves over to center. Um, there's definitely question marks. I think Bubs gonna handle it just fine. And um, yeah, I mean, we skipped over Navy on the mound. You know, there's no question marks there. Okay, so. Um, a lot of people have told me that Bub is not the only question mark on this team, but even Ruby and right and Al Z in left are question marks. And neither of them are, are dominant. Neither of them are, positions. right. I agree. So um, with that, I would say I've seen Ruby play right. I don't think that's a question mark at all. Al Zolta, I think, can handle left. Um, about what you said about Nay I think that's the most important part of, of, of the whole topic. Um, is Bub Abe Jeff Cohen? Is he Jake Dweck? No. But I think on a Navy team where people are not smoking the ball into the gaps and everything, of course, once or twice a week you're going to see that, but it's not regularly. Um, I think with Navy, the infield is the most important. Yes. He gets ground ball after ground ball, um, and Bub will make every fly ball catch. That's not an issue. Um, however, remember how Navy lost the World Series last year? It was a blooper to center. And his center fielder, it was Teddy at the time, misplayed yes. it a little bit and let the ball drop. And that changed the course of history for that season. So you can't just put in nobody in center. You have to have someone that's going to know over time that you got to go for this ball, not go for this ball, and study the game. And I agree that Bub is up to the challenge. I know he knows the league as good as anybody. He knows the opposing batters. And he's also a very, very quick learner. So what you may not see in week one or week two, you will see as the year goes on. Yes. It's up to this team, um, you know, to, to let the chips fall where they may because you do have the number one pick, Navy, on the mound. And, you know, th that's going to buy you a lot of mistakes, having Navy on the mound. Yes. Um, I would say, Norman, to uh, throw out my prediction, I think that when you get there opening day and you get in the box and then you have the fastest pitcher in the league just hurling it at you, it's a hard challenge opening day i remember last year on lumber we got swept opening day it's a tough task to go up against navy opening day if he's on and um for that reason plus the uncertainty about the d-backs team i'm looking for navy to prey on this team and uh and one more time to sweep and um yeah that's my thought process you i agree wholeheartedly that one more time we'll sweep this week um I think one more time has some questions in their lineup. They have a short lineup. Mo Shama really has to has to hit well this year. I'm not concerned about Bub hitting. He's a great hitter. Al Zolta, great hitter. Juber, great. But it's a short lineup. You really need uh, you, you really need Ben Rishney to duplicate what he did last year. Come up with some big hits. Ray S's. Dano has to hit. Lewis has to come through with some hits. Um, and H. H is is uh, a lot hot and cold. He could hit a ball a mile. He could hit a ball a mile further than uh, as, as far as anybody. Yeah. But he also goes into these spells where he flies out, you know, five six times in a row trying to hit the ball a mile. Um, H is best, I think, when he's punching the ball right up the middle into that left center gap that he could that he could hit, and uh, that's when he's really dangerous, like he was back on the Untouchables team back in 2014. Um, so. I, I, I like the team. I think they have questions line up. I think the two Shama brothers really have to step up this year, offensively specifically. Um, it's funny because you don't want to face an AB week one. Nobody does because you, you, you're looking at one to two losses usually. And it could set your team back uh, mentally also. And I don't think the D-backs are up to that challenge. Um, it's funny because this was supposed to be the triple header matchup. 
And instead, right. it got pushed up to the week one matchup. I think it could derail the D-backs, and uh, I think it will. So there we go. I'm going with uh, one more time to sweep. So are you. So is everybody else. JT, prove us wrong. Yes. And then you'll come on the show and you'll say, um, you're wrong. you know, how stupid we are. Um, opening day, Norm. Opening Friday. Opening day. Let's pray that the <laughs> everyone stays away. The We can play these games and get this week in without the triple headers amid the heat. I can't wait. Juices are flowing. So thank you. By the way, this season we have an unbelievable lineup. Jack Abaddy is back. Jackie, Jay-Z, Draftologist, Zolta is back. Sandy, the historian, Shalom is back. Ronald, RVJ, Jamal, my father, your grandfather is back and ready to do a prediction show this year. And many other star-studded guests this season. So Very excited, Norman. Thank you. Thank you to all the viewers. And let's finally play ball. Let's play too. Let's play too.